previous video, we created a cross-platform Xamarin Forms portable project. And we saw that there were both portable and shared projects for both uh, native applications using Xamarin.iOS or Xamarin.Android, as well as for the Xamarin Forms. Well, what's the difference between a portable class library and a shared project or a shared asset project? And which one is better than the other? And could I have done the exact same project that we did previously as a shared project instead of a portable class library? Well, let's take a look at the differences between a portable class library and a shared asset project in terms of sharing our code. In reality, for the types of things we'll do in this course at this beginning level and using Xamarin Forms, it really won't matter which one you choose. On a portable class library, however, the shared code is compiled as a DLL. And that DLL is based on the selected platforms for the .NET framework that are accessible to each of the different projects that are part of, of our solution. It includes the core libraries, includes things like Link, and it's unit testable, which is nice uh, for larger projects. When each project of our Xamarin solution is built and compiled, the platform specific part of the project links to this dynamic link library, the DLL. So it can use the procedures that are part of that. The same DLL then is used for each of the three platforms. For the shared asset projects, the shared code is actually brought into each project when they are built and compiled. Now this gives us some additional opportunities. It gives us more access to various APIs and allows us to do more things that are platform specific. And one nice feature is we can use conditional compiler directives. And I'll talk more about that in the next video. Um, as I've been examining projects and watching tutorials and attending Xamarin University, it seems like portable class libraries are the preferred method for a lot of developers. And they're especially great for larger projects where we've got multiple people working on it. Um, but there are also some very good advantages to shared asset projects. So as I said earlier, in this course, it really won't matter which one you choose for the most part. And I will try to use both along the way. So let's go ahead and create that same project we did earlier in the previous video as a portable class library. This time, let's create it as a shared asset project or a shared project. In the previous video, we created a project called Xamarin Forms Demo 1. And since this is going to be a shared asset project, I'm going to add SP, SAP. And we'll create this project. But I'm going to make this a Xamarin Forms shared project. Going to click OK. Once again, it has created for us projects for Droid, iOS, and WinPhone. And here's our app.cs that we had in the in the portable class library project. Very similar code we had before. I'm going to change the text here to South Mountain Community College. Let's do a couple more things in terms of our code. So I add a comma and we're going to change the font attributes to equal font attributes dot bold. I'm going to change the font size. Now the font size is device dependent as far as some named sizes. So we're going to use device dot get named size, and we can use name size dot large. And then my second parameter here is type of, and we're applying this to a label. And we'll do one more thing here. Let's do um, background color 
equals color dot blue. And I need a comma here separating these attributes. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my droid. Now the droid is already set as my shared project. I'm going to open that up. There's my main activity CS. Let's look at that. And notice the dot app here, uh, which is referring to that app.css, is underlined. That linkage just hasn't been established, so I'm going to come back up to the build menu and choose build solution or rebuild solution. That goes away. And I have an error here, type of does not exist. I've got a capital O that should be a lowercase o. So I'm going to come back to the app.cs. So that's type of. And let's just rebuild again. And that goes away. Okay, so I don't have any errors now. Let's just go ahead and test this. I'm going to test this. I've already got my Android player running. Uh, I'm using the Xamarin Android emulator. And I've got a Nexus 7 KitKat 800 by 1200 selected. Go ahead and run that. So we can see down here in the bottom it's, it's compiling. It's going to my emulator. And there is our project. So our label background is blue. We have South Mountain Community College in bold, large text. So I'm going to stop that. And I can do the same thing running it on iOS and Windows. I'm not going to bother taking the time to show you that, but, but rest assured it does work. So we did the exact same project in as a portable class library and a shared project. In the next video, we'll look at using conditional compiler directives to do things differently for the different platforms in a shared project.